Hi everyone, I am Zen Khan and in this video we are going to talk about some useful built-in functions in MATLAB. We are going to start off with the very basic that I think that you would be using every day while programming. So let's say if I first define a couple of variables x, y and z. So now I have three variables defined. Now I can see that my command window is already looking a bit gruff clustered and I need to clear out the command window. So what I do is I just simply write out CIC command and what it does it, it clears out the command window. I press enter and the command window gets cleared. The workspace isn't affected, only the command window gets cleared. Now if I need to clear out the workspace, the command that I use is clear. I press enter and the workspace gets cleared. Now the other thing is that when I'm writing different commands, let's say this, uh, and this and I'm defining another variable. Now what you see is that there is a bit of a gap between each line such as this one there's a big big gap there's a big gap and it kind of looks messy to me. So in order to reduce this gap what you do is you use the built-in command called format and you format it as compact. Once you format it as compact you press enter and now let me define another variable such as a is 4 and now you see that the spacing is reduced. Of course if you any if you forget what a command what a built-in function does is you can always access its help with writing doc space format and the help would open up. So right here it opens up and it tells you everything about format. So now we have talked about clear, we have talked about CIC, we have talked about format. Now let me talk about another function which is called din space. So how it works is din space is it creates an array of metrics which starts from one number which is the first one which is x1 in this case. So let's say I want to create a din space from 1 to the end term 10 and it asks me how many divisions do I need. So let's say between 1 and 1 is the starting point, 10 is the ending point, I need 20 divisions. So I write 20 and now it creates an array which starts from 1, ends at 10 and it has 20 divisions in between. So this is a very useful function which is called din space. And then another function that you might use quite a lot is the zeros function. So what the zeros function is you write zeros and you write a number. Let's say I write three. So it creates a three by three matrix of all zeros. Similarly, if I need to change the dimension, I can just write row comma column, three comma two. So it is three rows and two columns. Now in place of zero, if I need to make a matrix of all ones, I just write once. I write, let's say four, it works. I write, I define rows and columns that is say two and four. It works. Now there are times when you want an identity matrix. So in order to get an identity matrix, you write the command i and similarly you write 4 and it works. Similarly, if you write this, let's say you get this identity matrix. So now moving on. Now let's say I have this variable defined which has a real part and a complex part to it. So 2 plus 5i. Now if I need to extract the real part of this what I do is I write real and I within the input argument I write x I press enter and I get 2. So here real is my built in function and similarly if in order to extract the imaginary function I can do the same press it and I get the imaginary function. Now there are times when you have a, you have a number of uh, number of variables defined some are negative some are positive and you aren't really concerned about the negative or positive but rather their absolute magnitude. So let's say this. So in order to just get the absolute value of this what you do is you write abs and x press enter and you get the absolute value of the variable. Now one more function that we have been doing a lot is the plot function. 
So let me just quickly define the uh, two variables, one to ten, and y as equal to um, let's say ten to twenty. And I write plot x comma y. Now plot is a built-in function. I write plot. Oh, I made a mistake. Okay, so y has to be of the same length. So let's say eleven to twenty. And uh, now it should work plot x comma y. And it works and it opens this plot right here. Now, now I can dog this by pressing this here. Now it has dogged the figure to this space. I don't want it to be dogged here. I want it to be dogged here in the bottom right corner. So yeah, I get this plot function. Now another function. Now if I want to define what the axis, uh, the range of my axis is, I write axis, which is another built-in function, and here. I, within this, I write the minimum x, maximum x, minimum y, maximum y. So let's say I want the minimum y to be minimum x to be minus five, maximum x to be fifteen, minimum y to be min, minimum y to be zero, maximum y to be thirty. So I press enter, and you see the range of the axis changes. Similarly, if I want to put a title on this, I write the built-in function title. I write this is a graph. Press enter and I get the title. Similarly, if I write, if I need the x db, I write this built-in command x axis. I get the x axis. Similarly, for y axis, I can do the same with the y db and I get this. Now there are times when you need to draw another graph of on the same graph. However, if you were just to plot another function on this. This graph would get replaced, so this figure would get replaced, and another figure would open up. So in order to prevent that, you know, if you want to draw a number of graphs on the same figure, what you do is you write the function hold on. You press enter, and what this does is it is it tells MATLAB that you are interested in whatever figure you already have. You do not want it to be erased. So whatever you are going to draw, it is going to draw on top of it. Let me show you what I mean. So let me call y two as going from uh, twenty to eleven. Uh, sorry, I made a mistake. So let me call y two as going from twenty minus one and eleven. Now I get it right. So plot x comma y two. And since I have this hold on, this plot is going to be. Plotted on the same figure. I press and here, so I get this line. So since it was hold on, so it was plotting on the same figure. If I do hold off now, and now if I try to plot another uh, plot, let's say just this one, it is going to erase all of this and draw only this now. And here we go. So we have talked about plotting. We have talked about axes. We have talked about hold on and hold off. Now another. A uh, few built-in functions that we can talk about is the size function. So let's say you have a matrix A, uh, which is one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So in order to get to know what the size of this matrix is, what you do is you write size A and this. So it gives you two outputs. The first is the number of rows, which is two. The second is the number of columns, which is three. Now let's say if you have an array. Which is this? You have an array one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and you want to know what the size of the array is or the number of elements in the array. So you can obviously use size to get it. So size of B would give you one comma seven. But what you can do equally is you can use the function length, and you get seven. So it calculates the number of elements in the B array or matrix. So If I apply length on this, on A, it is going to give me three. So what it does is it just counts the number of columns when you apply this. So since there were only like there were only seven columns, it gave me seven here. There were three columns, it gave me three. So as a rule of thumb, just use the size whenever you have matrices and use the length whenever you have an array. Now a few other functions that I uh, want to introduce you to is that is the transpose function. So what trans transpose function does is 
it just interchanges the rows and the columns. So here I get transpose. Now in order to find the determinant of a matrix, let me define another matrix, uh, let's say R is defined as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. You just write determinant or press enter and you get the determinant. Similarly, if you want to find the inverse of a matrix, you write INV, which is inverse, and you get the inverse. Now, since the determinant was almost equal to zero, it becomes an, a non uh, invertible matrix, so it gives me an error, but it outputs the results in, anyway. So you get the point, right? This is how you get the inverse, this is how you get the determinant. Now, if you have, let's say, two matrices, one, two, three, or rather two vectors, one, two, three, and four, five, six, and you want to do the dot product of them, you just write dot, and you write A comma B, and it gives you the dot product. Similarly, if you want to find the cross product, you write A comma B, it gives you the, now, I made the mistake, okay, so it gives you the cross product. And now if I go back and if I have an array, let's say of a set of numbers, uh, here I have this, 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 this. And now I need to find what is the maximum uh, number in this array. I just write maximum, I write A and I, write, I get 72. Similarly, if I write, want to get the minimum, I write minimum A and I get it. And if I need to sum everything up in A, all you do is you write the sum A and you get it. Now, just before we end this video, one little thing that I want to let you know is that, so let's say if A is not just a array, but it is a matrix. Let's say I have a matrix here. I have a matrix here. Let's say what happens when I apply max max of a so what it does it when i apply max what it does it it outputs the maximum number from each of the columns so in this column it was seven it output seven in eight and nine similarly when i use minimum it would output the minimum value from each of the columns i get this and the same thing happens for sum when i press enter it is going to sum all the individual columns separately so seven plus four plus one gives you twelve all of these, uh, sorry, all of these 2, 5, 8 gives me 15 and this gives me 18. Here I have a PDF which talks about all the functions that we have talked about and even goes further. It is a very nice PDF. It just has four pages and it, talk, it gives you a, the name of the function and what each of the function does. Let's say we talked about CIC. It tells you it clears the command window. It tells you how to get help for a function and it goes on and it talks about zeros that we talked about ones, i's, then space. It's a real, it, it talks about real imaginary. It's a really nice PDF. I'm going to put a link down in the description if you want to download this uh, PDF and have a look. It would be really great. Yeah, it talks even about size and length. And one more thing is that I'm going to put a link to all the functions that are built in into MATLAB in the description as well. So it's always good to know what functions exist in order to be able to use them. If you found this video useful, don't forget to share this video and subscribe to the channel. And as always, see you in the next video.